Welcome to the Mental Health Hour. Uh, this is episode 99. 99, here we are. I know, 99. The 100 and, next week. And that means 100 is next week indeed. And we have just a special episode planned. We're just going to look back over 100 episodes and laugh and go over some good moments. And, Embarrassing uh, moments. Yeah. <laughs> Lookers. It'll be fun. Yeah. So we are... We are looking forward to it, and good evening to everybody coming in, and Ray, good to see you. Good to see everybody. Tonight, we are discussing panic disorders. Mm. We've done anxiety, we've done uh, panic attacks, I think, or something along those lines. So we'll take a broad look at the topic for uh, episode 99. Craig, good to see you. And so we'll do just the normal rundown of uh, some slides. Some I have a video from our friends at Psych2Go. And let's get on into it. I personally have been diagnosed with general anxiety disorder. Uh, Gemma, I believe you spoke on that as well. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, I think it's a fairly... What's the uh, good way to put it? it? It's a fairly common diagnosis in the mental health world. And, you know, that being said, it's a, something we can all relate to. We did the episode with Eric where he spoke on his anxiety and what it does to him, how he copes, what he does. Uh, that was episode 41, I believe, going back in the analogs or the annals or the history mm -hmm. speaking of which everything can be found at our youtube channel all the replays um as well as on any major podcasting platform all that information is in the bio link which hattie has been nice to drop in there for you to um, hit it's also in any episode description and of course on the discord so if you like what you see please like us, follow us, share us out, help us grow. We've done a hundred, almost a hundred. Couldn't say a hundred yet. We've almost done a hundred episodes, and we like to keep on going strong. So, Gemma, do you want to speak on an opening thought, phrase, anything with panic attacks or panic disorders? Uh, yeah, I've definitely mentioned struggling with them personally in the past. Um, I think a lot of people struggle at times when you're actually in that moment having the panic attack, panic disorder. It's You've picked up some slides that do determine the difference, but it can genuinely feel like a heart attack at the time or something. Uh, I did used to struggle with them tremendously. Uh, thankfully, not too many now. But for some people, they are very, very real and debilitating uh, condition that can completely affect your whole life, going out and things like that, for fear of having one. I know we spoke to Eric. Um, Naomi's dropped in the uh, chat the episode there if you want to watch it. But I know he has spoken in the past about panic attacks and things and the way it affects him. So they, they do affect a lot of people. And it's a very real and debilitating thing. Absolutely. We also spoke way back when with Ella on her struggles and journey. And she also has suffered from panic uh, attacks in public. Mm hmm our good friend Ella. I can't myself say that I've ever experienced a full-on panic attack. I, I, I definitely struggle with anxiety, but mm -hmm. everybody have has felt the strains of anxiety at some point. 
it doesn't have to be a full blown panic attack for you to anxiety is a big fancy word for worry. Right. Um, mm. And, and we all worry about something every now and again, mm. whether it be finances um, or jobs. Uh, I, mean, I think that's more for everyone likely finances, the state of everything, the cost of living and everything, which we've also spoken about. Yeah. There's, there's nothing wrong with anxiety. It's a, it's a part of life. Where it becomes a disorder is when it controls us and we nearly obsess over what we cannot control, essentially. So that's something to think about when you're talking about anxiety as a whole. Anxiety is a normal part of life. But when we obsess over it and it controls us and our emotions, and it's usually, I don't want to say 100% of the time because what is 100%, but it's usually over something that is out of our control. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I generally find that the things that are stressing me out aren't necessarily the thing that, like, if I'm getting super stressed out, it's happened quite a lot lately not to the point of a panic attack yet but I've been getting that stressed out by things and then it's usually something little something trivial that will absolutely tip me over the edge like dropping something or the bin line is splitting and especially when you're out in public if it happens and it's something really small I find that people can look at you and judge and think they're getting that stressed out over that but they're not realizing the collective that has got you to that point where you can have this panic attack or panic episode um, built on by all the anxiety and the stress that has caused that. And it can be really difficult, especially out in public, because when you are out in public and you are aware of it building up and trying to control it, that can exacerbate it even more to the point where it can bring it on even more. Indeed. Let's take a look uh, first. Before we get into any slides and stuff, I want to throw this video on. We love using videos from, especially from the YouTube channel Psych2Go, mm. a great channel for mental health oriented stuff. We will drop that in the Discord as well, as with the slides, as always. So we'll start with this quick video about five minutes, goes over seven signs or symptoms of panic disorders. And then we'll get into some slides and talk about some differences in anxiety, panic, actual cardiac related incidents. And then of course, how to cope and what we can do to help. All right, so I'm gonna throw this on real quick and we'll be back in just a minute. Have you ever experienced intense periods of anxiety for some unknown reason? Perhaps you felt nauseous or numb all of a sudden. These are panic attacks and it typically lasts for a few minutes, but it can be incredibly fatiguing and scary. It's likely you'll experience a few panic attacks in your lifetime. However, if you experience these intense and stressful episodes frequently, you may end up developing a panic disorder. So here are seven signs of a panic disorder. Before we begin, we would like to mention that this video is created for educational purposes only and is not intended to substitute a professional diagnosis. If you suspect you may have a panic disorder or any mental health condition, we highly advise you to seek help from a qualified mental health professional. Number one, symptoms of a panic attack. Have you experienced an intense feeling of fear and dread or felt suddenly lightheaded? Symptoms like these and others like a rapid heart rate, chills, pain in the chest or stomach are some of the typical effects of a panic attack. While you may have experienced these symptoms in isolated instances, it may potentially develop into a panic disorder when they become more frequent. Number two, you have recurrent and frequent panic attacks. How many times have you had a panic attack? According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, it's considered a panic disorder if you have one or more panic attacks followed by a month of intense fear of future attacks. While the number, intensity, and duration of a panic attack can vary from person to person, 
Experiencing a large number of panic attacks in a short period of time is a cause for concern. Number three, you avoid things that may trigger your anxiety. Have you become afraid to do certain things like driving in fear you'll have a panic attack during those things? You may exhibit avoidant behavior to avert potential triggers. In some cases, people with a panic disorder are sometimes seen to also have agoraphobia, which is the fear and avoidance of certain places and situations. This can make daily life much more difficult and scary to navigate. Number four, the attacks are not the result of another disorder. Are your panic attacks caused by stress and triggers or are they a physical health issue? The cause of panic attacks may not always be apparent. Hypothyroidism, heart issues, and breathing problems may show similar symptoms to a panic attack. Similarly, consuming caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine may also have a similar effect. It's important to ask your doctor as they may help you determine whether your panic attacks are symptoms of a physical illness or due to a panic disorder. Number five, irrational fear of dying. Did you know that your anxiety is a natural reflex to danger? While it may have been helpful to your survival in the past, such as telling you to run away from an attack by an animal, it can be ineffective and exhausting when the source of your anxiety today can't be physically fought and defeated. If you constantly experience irrational thoughts about your life being threatened or intense periods of stress where you feel like you may be in harm's way, this may be a sign of a panic disorder. Number six, fear of losing control or going crazy. Have you ever felt very overwhelmed all of a sudden? Maybe you're having trouble breathing properly or the things you see are starting to spin. If you are unaware of the symptoms of a panic attack, you may not know that you're going through one. This may make you feel like you're suddenly losing control or going crazy. So if you have reoccurring experiences where you feel like you're losing control, you may be having a panic attack or have a panic disorder. Number seven, feelings of detachment and unreality. Have you ever felt numb as if the people and places around you seem unreal or detached? Sometimes with a panic disorder, you may experience depersonalization, which is detachment from yourself and derealization, which is detachment from your surroundings. The numbness you may feel when interacting with others, your environment, and even with yourself can be unpleasant and maybe distressing to your daily life. So have you experienced any of the signs mentioned? Tell us about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it with others who may find it helpful too. All of the references used are also added in the description box below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell icon for more Psych2Go content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Okay. Ella, thank you so much for the 18 months. It's good to see you. Sorry about the migraines, but it's good to have you here. Yes, Psych2Go is a wonderful channel. We utilize them frequently on this show. The information is good. It's relatable. Um, and it's, best of all, on a level that is easily understood. We can take a look at certain or different topics and kind of break it down before we get into some real facts or, or slides or information. So there were seven symptoms there, seven signs, seven symptoms of panic disorders. And it was mentioned frequent well a lot of the information on that video is stuff that we have discussed on different episodes of the show so that just goes to show how how frequently this is in our lives how prominent anxiety can be jim in chicago land everybody welcome on in thank you for the 50 bits Gemma. What did you take from that video of anything uh, pop out in particular? Uh, I think it explains it really well for a start, but that's why I think we pick a lot of uh, content from there because they do break it down really simply. Um, just going over the <clears throat> symptoms and how they can, how it can feel. Um, I think to break it down and explain it, so that anybody that's going through that knows that it's normal because in that moment when you're having a panic attack, it can be really scary. 
um especially when it's like your heart and things you just think oh my god um but to see how common they are and that it's normal as well i think that helps uh, i remember well i don't remember actually the first time it happened but i remember thinking after i'd had one a really big one just how i guess relieved i was to realize it wasn't anything like a heart attack embarrassed as well thinking the i i remember feeling like i'd made a massive fuss over something that was a panic attack but then realizing how common they are and like that you're not alone and that a lot of people have them as well was a was a help absolutely and we like like we've mentioned uh just a little bit earlier and both are in chat tonight when we talked with ella and eric j gaming on on the show they have shared panic attacks or panic disorders uh their stories with them so it is a nice thing to feel not alone, obviously, right? That's one of the best feelings when you're dealing with something or learning how to cope with an issue. It's nice to know that you're not alone in it because we always tend to feel default alone. It's comforting and anxiety is felt by everyone, maybe not to a, a disorder level, but people can relate, which makes it that much easier to not feel like you're alone in this world with your struggles. And that's, that's above all, that's important. And Gemma, you were talking about how your heart and blood pressure and everything like that can get and feel it is not uncommon for mm. me to get a call out to a house on the ambulance for somebody it, it goes out as a cardiac patient or a chest pains patient and it's really just a anxiety attack or a panic attack of course mm. i'll disclaimer that with we can't rule that in the field mm. we can't come to your house take your vitals and then say this is just a panic attack because we yeah. can't physically know what's going on inside it we can't rule anything out without blood work which has to be done at the hospital so mm. usually uh, once they hear some numbers once we discuss anxiety and their history with it they usually start feeling better and they they may even refuse transport to the hospital knowing it could just be that. But we always, always, always make it known that nothing can be ruled out, especially cardiac related, without blood work, mm -hmm. which will require a transport to the hospital. And when you're having that, like, obviously, you can't see inside your own body, you know, what you can feel. And when you're ringing up or someone's ringing on your behalf to get medical attention, as soon as, like, because I remember the feeling, of, it was like a crushing sensation in my chest, my heart. And as soon as you say that over the phone to anybody, like when you're trying to get medical attention, obviously the first thing they have to think of is, could this be a heart attack? Because that's something that they have to act on quick. So... Obviously, you have to go with and rule out anything potentially life-threatening as a, the first thing. And when that's ruled out, then look at other things that it can be. But because the symptoms and the feeling at the time is so similar to that of what seems to be like a heart attack, you can't rule that out until, obviously, other things have been checked. Because if you didn't check it and it ended up being a heart attack, then damn. That's exactly right. And that's what we want to make known. Um, mm -hmm. If there is a history of anxiety, 
a relevant history of anxiety than that. We, we definitely discuss that. And, and thing I will say though, like just to be clear, if you do have a history of anxiety and you're having a, what you believe to be a panic attack, still get it checked because that doesn't mean it is a panic attack. So if you're having one and you are getting those pains, it still pays to get it checked just in case that one day it turns out to be more than a panic attack. Mm -hmm. I um, had a friend, their family member, uh, it was during COVID lockdown and they didn't want to go in the ambulance because they thought it was just a panic attack. They were absolutely adamant it was a panic attack and it wasn't. It ended up being a heart attack. So definitely don't rule it out and get checked. Um, you can be absolutely sure it's one thing and you can't see what's going on inside of you. Absolutely. And yeah, uh, never... Never rule out anything. It's, it's mm -hmm. just good advice. Mm -hmm. uh, going back through some comments, uh, Michael just Murray says, illegal drugs can trigger anxiety as well, like tweaking after meth use. Yes. Drug use, substance use increases paranoia normally, which is a major player. So uh, that's absolutely true. Uh, Jim in Chicago land says I get panic attacks and anxiety too, kind of a PTSD thing. And that is also something to be looked at. It, it definitely can stem back to PTSD. The, like the video said, uh, if you're, if you're um, scared of like leaving the house, they, they mentioned agoraphobia uh, or if you're knowingly, holding yourself back from doing things because of fear of either a panic attack or uh, something that has something negative that has come of it before it's starting to get to that point of uh, the, the disorder the anxiety is get getting control so let's go ahead and take a look at some slides uh, mm -hmm. this moving along very quickly uh, so let's get into some slides and we will uh, discuss the differences and such between disorders between anxiety we'll talk about that heart attack mm -hmm. stuff because I wanted to include that just for that purpose so I'm glad we've gotten into that as well mm -hmm. so, Gemma, if you don't mind running us uh, yeah. so these are some of the signs and symptoms of panic disorder so sweating uh, abnormal perspiration, dizziness, feeling faint, angina pectoris, chest pain or discomfort, heart attack. So it's not like it, it feels like one generally. Rapid yeah. pulse or heart palpitations. Uh, hot and cold, so hot flashes or chills. Fear of death, feeling an fe feeling of impending doom or losing control, detached from reality, shallow breathing, shortness of breath, or trouble breathing, hand, arm, leg vibration, numbness, tingling, shaking, or trembling, and then an upset stomach and nausea, abnormal distress. Uh, just to pick up on the breathing real quick, when I was having panic attacks, I was always told to get a paper bag, and just breathe into a paper bag and try and take really um, deep breaths into a paper bag. Because if you're breathing short, shallow breaths, that's obviously going to affect uh, your SpO2 level, the heart rate, everything. So to try and keep on top of your breathing and control your breathing will help with a lot of the other things like dizziness. Uh, if you're not getting enough oxygen and things, that can affect your dizziness, sweating, a lot of that. So the key thing is to try and control your breathing. Absolutely. And most importantly, also, when you're in an anxiety attack or a panic attack, your brain has taken over. Um, it's completely, you know, neurological. Um, the brain works in, um, it works against us sometimes. Uh, so when we put so much thought and effort into what, 
could be happening? What could go wrong? We're actually making ourselves sicker. And, and that's kind of like what nail driver was discussing there. His body kind of almost turned on him because the brain had talked him into this anxiety, this panic attack, this um, actual feeling um, and that can work against us in some cases. So we have to control the breathing, calm down, calm our brain down, calm the racing thoughts down. Uh, and we'll look at some of that when we get back into how to stop or how to uh, cope with. Um, next, we'll break down the anatomy of a panic attack, uh, Gemma. Uh, yeah, so anatomy of a panic attack. So a billion thoughts, none of them are helpful. Forgot how blinking works. Face is flushed or pale. 90% sure that this is an actual heart attack. Stomach feels like two weasels wrestling. Knees are either locked or wobbly. Feet frozen in place. Don't even ask what's going on back here. <laughs> Hands are cold or sweaty or both. Invisible hippopotamus sitting on chest. So the crushing sensation. And then all of the feelings all at once. Yeah. First thing they, at the top there are a billion thoughts. None of them helpful. That's the, what I was just referring to. Racing thoughts. Uh, mm. just you got. If you're ever awake at night, lying in bed, staring at your ceiling fan, not able to sleep. Uh, you're probably experiencing some racing thoughts because everything's going through your head at once and not allowing your brain to come to a rest phase. Oh, yeah. Uh, that usually that happens at night as well. Yeah. And it certainly can mimic the feelings of uh, a heart attack. Usually, mm -hmm. well, I won't even try and speculate. We'll just get into it. It's the next slide. What is the difference between a panic attack and a heart attack? Gemma, please take a yep. Okay, so a panic attack is a sharp stabbing pain in the middle of the chest. Sudden onset, pain gets better over time. Symptoms only last 20 to 30 minutes. Racing heart rate, shortness of breath, sweating, shakiness, and tingling in the hands. And then a heart attack, so a squeezing pain and pressure in the chest, sudden onset or during physical exertion, pain radiates, pain gets worse over time, longer lasting symptoms, shortness of breath, sweating and nausea and vomiting. So you can see there are some similarities. Uh... But the mm -hmm. biggest the biggest thing comes down to or when we're interviewing a patient on the scene, uh, I like to know what the pain feels like. Mm. What is I describe the pain to me is what I usually say. And if they say it's a sharp pain, um, stabbing, um, kind of center mass. Yeah. And that's another thing. Point to it then that kind of relaxes my brain a little bit on the cardiac side of things. And then my next question will be, do we have a history of any anxiety, depression, this, that, and the other? And we'll start heading down that road. If it's a heart attack, we're looking at more of them coming forward with a pressure, not so much a pain. It's, uh, we get, mm -hmm confused a little bit with it's always called chest pains and stuff like that uh, there's many different reasons for chest pains and many different mm -hmm. styles types categories of chest pain when it's the big one if you will or the heart attack we're looking for pressure like an elephant sitting on your chest uh, mm -hmm. and radiating down the left arm uh, and maybe into the jaw these are warnings more closely related and start setting alarm bells in our heads to start down the road of cardiac treatment. Mm -hmm. So 
that's just a little bit there. This is just, this is not diagnosis. We, we always say, always seek medical professionals help. We're just up here chatting. But this gives you a little look at the difference and I can speak from riding an ambulance on how we kind of operate on that. Another good uh, factor is we've mentioned it, but history. Have you had mm -hmm. a history of heart attack in the past? Um, yeah. Not to say that if there is no cardiac history, you can't have a heart attack. That's not true at all. But I want to know what your cardiac history is because mm -hmm. that's very important as well. So, um, And as Ella says as well, uh, just uh, heartburn can be quite painful as well. Um, I get a lot of heartburn and indigestion, and by God, can that really be? Yeah, heartburn sucks. Um, yeah. Let's take a look next at coping with uh, the panic disorders and panic attacks. Um, so, Gemma, if you don't mind, we'll start with disorder. Uh, yeah. So, how to cope with panic disorder? So, cognitive behavior. Viral therapy, CBT, we have spoken quite a lot about that in the past. Anti-anxiety medications, uh, obviously see a medical professional for those. Uh, develop a meditation routine. Um, if you're not good with meditation, there are some very good guided meditations out there that can start you off. Uh, maintain an active lifestyle. Limit stimulants like caffeine and nicotine. Cut out alcohol and any explicit drugs and engage in social and recreational activities. And moving forward to panic attack. Um, yeah, so how to cope during a panic attack. Breathe deeply. Like I said, into the paper bag helps as well. Um, remind yourself that it will pass. Ground yourself with a safe space. Tell yourself positive affirmations. Close your eyes, seek support, touch something soothing and tangible, limit stimulants and mood-altering substances, and stay active. Also, a really good thing for that time is a bit of mindfulness. Um, try doing the uh, things that you can see, smell, um, like that. Obviously, you're not going to be wanting to maybe taste stuff while you're in the middle of that, but certainly things you can hear, things you can see, things you can touch try and bring yourself back into that moment, regulate your breathing, and that will help. Absolutely. Both slides for uh, disorder and for panic attack discuss limiting stimulants like caffeine and nicotine, cut out alcohol, and explicit drugs. Uh, we've mentioned it already. They hinder the process especially stimulants. Stimulants start overworking the brain again. And you got to come down off of that racing thoughts, feeling, and control the breathing and control the mind, uh, like Gemma was just saying. As always, maintaining exercise, active lifestyle, journaling. Mm -hmm. Anti-anxiety meds are very helpful if you're talking with a psychiatrist. That's the route to go there. Um, and CBT, of course, is one of our uh, topics on the show. So just some thoughts and ideas on how to kind of cope with the different, the panic disorders and anxiety attacks and such. Let's, uh, let's look a little bit further into that with the next couple slides. It's, this one kind of goes over some of the same, but the next two will get more in-depth. Uh, yeah, there we go. So panic attacks. Typically panic attacks last for around 30 minutes. So factors are changes in life, smoking, excessive caffeine, traumatic event and stress. The symptoms, trembling or shaking hands, heart palpitations, sweating, 
hyperventilation, nausea or upset stomach, and a fear of dying. And then some tips to calm down during a panic attack. Deep breathing, listen to music, practice mindfulness, write down your thoughts, seek a doctor's help, use a RAIN method, and then go for a walk. Excellent. So we'll move forward and, and break down those um, coping mechanisms. Uh, yeah. Right, okay. So how to stop panic attacks? Use deep breathing. Focus on taking deep breaths in and out through your mouth. Feeling the air slowly fill your chest and belly and then slowly leave them again. That's mindfulness. Yeah. Repeat a positive phrase to stop a panic attack symptoms. Try focus on repeating a phrase that you feel connected to that has a, a positive message and grounds you in reality. You'll see this a lot with therapy, kind of a mantra, something close to you um, to, to bring yourself down to stop the racing thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then relax your muscles. To overcome panic attack symptoms, try relaxing your muscles in increments. Focus on uncurling your fingers and toes. Then move to your forearms, shoulders, and through your torso. We did something like this uh, live on one of the episodes where I did the guided body scan. There's an awful lot of body scans out there. I have some that I really do need to upload, I swear. Oh, I sometime will. Soon. Yeah, sometime in this next decade, maybe. But um, yeah, guided body scans can really help with that. Absolutely. Uh, then there's find a focus object. So if you want to overcome panic attack symptoms, pick a familiar object to focus on. This can be looking at your shoes or feeling the fabric of your shirt. Recognize your panic attacks. So one of the first steps to taking control of your panic attacks is to recognize that you are having one. Close your eyes. Some panic attacks come from triggers that overwhelm you. This can block out any extra stimuli and make it easier to focus on your breathing. And then practice mindfulness. Mindfulness can help ground you in the reality of what is around you. These specific sensations ground you firmly in the reality and give you something objective to focus on. Thank you very much for going through that, Gemma. Um, as always, the informative slides that we use, will all the credit for any slide or video that we use goes into the video description on our YouTube channel or into the Discord as well. So you can uh, further research yourself and we can, if you're into doing some further reading on any of the top topics that we discuss, we try and make it easily accessible for you. Mm -hmm. Hattie says, I had Valium for a short period, but it only helped. I took it very early on before the severe vertigo hit. Mm. And Eric J. Gaming says, I'm on Ativan for years due to my anxiety. There's many medicines or medications out there available. Some over-the-counter uh, supplements as well that people have uh, reported good things about. Everybody's body's different. Everybody's body reacts differently to different medications. Sometimes it's kind of a shopping thing where you have to find what works best for you. Mm -hmm. For that, we always recommend talking with a, at very minimum, your general care physician, your a medical doctor, obviously. But the best case scenario for anything uh, mental health related, medication wise, is a psychiatrist. Um, mm -hmm. They are specifically trained in the brain, and that's what these drugs are are affecting. So yes, there's many options out there for the medication route. If you like that as an option, some people do not, and that's okay as well. That just means looking at some of the other options. Uh, and I did want to uh, 
go over the recognition, uh, recognition or recognizing your panic attacks. That's huge. If you can master that or, or, or at least come up with a way to, uh, talk yourself, talk to yourself when things start getting hairy and you want to, and you're thinking you're going down the wrong path of thought and, and things are getting kind of out of control. If you can stop right there and say, wait a minute, I know that I tend to have panic attacks. I tend to have, I tend to overthink things. Sometimes things get the better of me completely normal. And you recognize that and you, it's becomes very easy to control. You gain control over the situation then. You, you start to gain control over your brain at that point before your brain taking over and going down the, wor the many wormholes that it can uh, start heading down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can take control of the situation and say, I need to, I'm having a panic attack. This is something that I'm used to. I know what it feels like. This is what's happening. Let's start calming down. Let's recognize the symptoms. Let's let's take control of the situation before I allow my brain to take control of me, mm -hmm. which it, 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 it tends to do in these times. Yeah. You can get those, um, they're like fidgets, but you can get them as like rings, bracelets and things that can help. So if you are prone to anxiety and, um, panic attacks, things like that, you can get the special, uh, things you can wear, rings, bracelets, necklace that are have um, a fidget on them. And then one thing that I have, um, it's a necklace, it's got a fidget, but it's also you can put like essential oils and things in them as well so that you've got something to concentrate on with the feel of it and the smell. And then there's um, hematite in there as well because hematite is often very cool. Um, and it's just a good way of having something with you all the time that looks good, but has a purpose as well. If you need that something with you, Jim in Chicago land, uh, he he comes in with. I continue to use CBD THC gummies when I go to bed. Uh, it helps a little, but I continue to get panic attacks intermittently. They are also an, another option uh not everybody is allowed to like i would feel i feel personally like i could benefit from cbd or thc oils um mm -hmm. topical creams and that kind of thing but i can't because of my job uh, i cannot piss dirty i can't i can't do these sorts of of medications not even the CBD? Not even the CBD. Uh, anything mm -hmm. that contains THC, even the THC free. Does CBD have THC? Because it doesn't here. Yeah. Uh, some do, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah there, it's the THC over here that's illegal. You're not allowed it here. There is also um, THC free CBD mm -hmm. products, but there is still traces and people have gotten hemmed up uh, with uh, the THC free as well. It's okay. like 0.001% or something like that, but it's still for whatever reason might show up. Wow. So I, until I retire, I'm, I'm just going to have to wait on that unless legislation changes as it is. But even still that just because uh, something becomes legalized does not mean like drinking alcohol is completely legal, but I'll get fired on the spot if I drink on the job. You know what I mean? Same mm. thing. So that is another option as well. And as Jim mentioned, um, speak with a physician first and and go before you go down that route. There is a good discussion to be had there, at least, if nothing else. And another possible tool in the toolbox, which is what we're really after in the mental health game having as many tools in your toolbox is essential, especially mm -hmm. in my road of recovery and sobriety, as many tools as I can keep in that toolbox. Because with anything, 
we we tire on things. We not tire. We I don't want to. It sounds horrible to say we get bored with things, but we do. It's it's completely natural for us to not want to do the same exact thing every single day. So keeping as many tools in the toolbox as you can uh, is a very great strategy. So when you do eventually maybe tire out from journaling, you enjoy it in the moment or you enjoy it for a while, but then it starts to feel like a chore. You're not getting the same benefits. It's just, it's completely normal for things to, you want things to stay exciting and you want to keep changing things up essentially. So you can mm -hmm. pull another tool out of your toolbox is all I'm trying to say. And, it, and there's nothing wrong with not wanting to go out for your daily walk because it's the same damn walk every day, you know, but what works one day might not work the next day. Our bodies are ever changing. Our brains are ever changing. And it's just a normal part of life. So keeping things fresh, keeping things motivating, keeping things different is just as important as keeping mindful of your situation at all times. Gemma, anything to add to that that I may have missed? Yeah, no, sorry. I had to mute myself. Thomas came down. But um, no, I think you covered everything with what I, with what I heard anyway. But I had to deal with... just in your toolbox. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had to deal with the fact that I have a child that won't sleep. Well... Just for a <laughs> That can also raise anxiety in anyone. Oh, God, yeah. Trust me. It did. Every time I heard him coming down a step, I'm like, oh, my God, he's going to burst in. I'm familiar with just trying to run this podcast with, well, you have your end. You've got a hamster, a child. Uh, I've yeah, got people um, uh, yeah. that sometimes just can't be bothered to stay quiet for just one hour. You know, she'll yeah. sit and watch a damn movie. When I'm as soon as that live button's hit, it's time to raise hell. <laughs> oh God, yeah, it's like uh, they know either yeah. the live button or when you think I'm gonna just sit down and have a few minutes. Like, yeah, oh, it's. I keep saying, I keep joking that there's a sensor in my ass that tells Thomas when to shout me, and as soon as I sit down, boom, there we go. <laughs> but that is uh. That's the most important thing I think that we can take away from tonight. Uh, just a broad overview of panic disorders. And we can certainly, over the next hundred episodes, start breaking into different types of disorders for panic, for anxiety. But real quick, we'll, we'll, we'll recap um, the deep breathing very much so mindfulness exercises, which was the last thing, but deep breathing, the repeating the positive mantra uh, that works for you. You know, uh, you discussed feeling textures and stuff, fidget spinners, worry beads, uh, worry stones, so a smooth mm -hmm. stone that you can just rub between your fingers can help. And then these are all, these are all mindfulness techniques. Um, oh, a good so one, but um, it was just something I found out about recently as well that uh, Thomas's, I guess, therapist told us about. They're called Zen Patches. Uh, they're aimed at kids. You can get adult versions, and it's just a little coloured sticker. It just looks like a little reward sticker or something. Sure. But they have got um, like, like essential oils and things in them, and it's supposed to be quite calming. So mm -hmm. then patches yeah, I've heard of those. Actually, yeah, they're supposed to be quite good. And then I've just got some sleep ones as well for him. But aromatherapy, uh, which is kind of what they offer, what you're talking about with the essential oils. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't really discussed that, but that can be a, a, a very relaxing technique that you can use as well. Um, whether it be mm -hmm. a patch like you're discussing or a diffuser 
Your uh, diffusers are really good. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're very easily uh, found on Amazon.com um, mm-hmm. uh, or just a trip to your local Walmart or Mega Mart store, superstore. Uh, they're usually very easy to find. Uh, they plug right I in. I also the make aromatherapy candles. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, Gemma will be popping in the Discord later to put where you can find her candles as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, finishing down the list of recap, uh, focus objects, again, mindfulness, uh, focus objects fall right into that category. Um, closing your eyes to try and start controlling, taking control. We talked about recognizing your panic attacks, recognize that you are in the moment of it, be mindful of it, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then try and take control back. Uh, so recognizing is the first step. If you can master that, then you're on your way to coping and living with these panic attacks. Uh, A good thing to help with that, journal them as well. Document when you've had them. And that will help you to discover if there's any triggers. So uh, keep a, keep a record of when you've had them. What potentially, if you know, caused it. And that will help you in the uh, future to determine what is a trigger for these panic attacks and try and avoid them. 100%. 100%. Journaling strikes again. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was episode 99, Panic Disorder mm. on the Mental Health Hour. Uh, let's get into some community calendar and then we're going to send it on out of here so I can get things done around the house uh we missed him very much last week hopefully he's back tonight i know he's in the chat right now jim in chicago land catalyst every wednesday here on twitch 11 p.m eastern standard time his twitch channel is twitch.tv slash jim in chicago land give him a follow and join us for catalyst tonight uh check out our good buddy as well array of sunshine uh, Ray streams Tuesday nights. He's got his Ray of Sunshine broadcast, which I love. Um, I'm usually there as well. And uh, just positive stories, positive vibes. Check him out. Give him a follow as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric J. Gaming is here tonight as well. Uh, give him a follow for if you're into video games and mental health interviews. He does all of the above on his Twitch channel every Monday night at 7 p.m. Uh, and then Gemma, Gemma was recently live. Yes? Yeah. I was live, was it yesterday with Matt doing some gardening? And then at the weekend, we did some uh, baking, cooking, a bit of everything. Um, I, we've been planning to do one for the last week and we were going to go tonight and then I thought, oh no, it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So hopefully tomorrow. Gemma has her own Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash jemmyh83. Give mm-hmm. her a follow for that kind of content and also any of her socials and uh, maybe her YouTube channel if you want to check that out. Mm-hmm. I might even show you how to make an aromatherapy candle. Like there the you go. And lastly, but certainly not least, I got to get my bunnies back. Penelope has claimed all of them. For all things bunny, check out our great sponsor and friend, uh, longtime sponsor of the show, Ella the Bunny Mom. She was here tonight. Uh, She's still here right now. Um, www.mybunnyvalentine.com. Use the promo code FIREDUDE15 to save 15% on your purchase. Always a good... uh, contributor to the comment section and a good friend of ours uh mm-hmm. she streams late night as well on her twitch channel ella the bunny mom uh give her a follow for insomniac tunes and puppy cat her mm-hmm. her bunny rabbit um and then join our discord we always try and tap that at the end uh, discord is where it's at um good community everybody that's usually in the chatters box is you can be found over there as well. Um, and uh, good conversation. All the informative slides from tonight, the videos, um, and any updates on the show, show schedules, and show extras, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Mm -hmm. the Discord. The invite link is there and should be good. Uh, and yes, Ella has a new channel, Ella Tries Games. She's going to be gaming now, too. I gave it a follow already. So I haven't seen it go live yet, though, unless mm -hmm. I've been at work and missed it. Um, uh, and Jim says, no Catalyst tonight. Sag. Follow him on Twitter at JS Scope and enjoy the 2017 Midwest Perry Meetup as seen on oh, Perry. Wow. So a little alternative Wednesday night programming from Jim. Um, and that is tonight instead of Catalyst, in lieu of Catalyst. But Catalyst mm -hmm. will be back. All right, guys, I have got to get some dinner dispersed to the masses here at the Conrad household. And uh, we'll see everybody next week for the big 100th episode. Uh, stop on in, say hello. We appreciate every one of you. Thank you, as always, for the subs, the bits, the shares, the likes, the follows, and everything that I may have missed. You guys are awesome, and we'll see you back here next week. Bye now. Yeah, don't miss it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>